Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Four Elements Room. This is a busy room tonight, and we're going to get busier. Uh, Alian of the Left Chip Tribe. I hope I said that right. Yes, you did. Yes. Okay, good. Boy, I'm learning. <laughs> from um, from the, Sikkim, India. From where? Yeah, Kalimpong. Kalimpong. Yeah. Kalimpong. Yeah. India. Boy, I'm learning all kinds of new words. Is going to put is going to um, gift us, gift us. That's what it's going to be. With um, oops, I'm sorry. I'm having some trouble with my camera here. Got it. With a education that I'm going to let her tell you about. This is one I've been waiting for all day, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we're here now. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yep. I was going to give the title, but I can't move my, here we go. Al did it, did no. The story of the, and I'll probably get this wrong, Moon Female Shamans of the Lepchka tribe. Yeah. Okay, you're on. Alien, it's all yours. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Alien, and uh, I'm from the Lepcha tribe, which uh, belong to the foothills of the Himalayas. We uh, are spread out over Sikkim, Darjeeling, Kalimpong, parts of Nepal and parts of Bhutan. And we are the indigenous tribe of this region. And uh, I come here today with a little nervousness, <laughs> but I'm here today to share with you the story of my people, my story and the way I have come into this journey and uh, it's important for me to share this because our people are losing history, wisdom, connection in a lot of ways. And today, so today I come here as a voice from this region, from this part of the earth. And uh, I hope and pray that uh, we all, and especially me today, would be guided on this journey and blessed. And uh, may they speak through me. And uh, may I trust. May I trust. And may we all trust. So um, my name, Alien, means the shoot of a plant. And uh, it was given to me by my grandfather. And uh, it was written in a book before I was born. And I had not realized that um, it would be such a big part of my life. Though I've lived in the city all of my life because my father used to work in a bank and uh, we traveled throughout India uh, getting transferred uh, every three, four years. <clears throat> so I've never really lived in my hometown till much later. But uh, him, especially him, he always told us stories and always took us back home during holidays. And that, that helped me connect somehow. And there was this part inside me that always connected to that. And this felt like home. Um, though uh, I lived away and was disconnected, there was a point in my life when uh, I think <coughs> the call was really loud and I didn't listen many times. And so uh, I'd like to share the journey of how I came back home. And I've been blessed uh, that these kind of projects to say somehow when it is the right time, they fall into your lap and you are nudged very gently to uh, follow through. And uh, it came through uh, two publications actually from this uh, publishing house called Zuban Publishers and they're a feminist publishing house we support uh, LGBTQ rights and indigenous cultures and uh, um, very different kind of work. And uh, it was the theme of that was women and work. And um, that got me thinking. And uh, I, since textile art and textiles is something I feel very connected to and, uh, and that is a medium, I, one of the mediums that I use to express and to share my story. And um, so I thought of us and I thought, of how I could always see it. And every time it is like this for me, it is my process of um, questioning, of understanding, of uh, searching. 
And then I thought of women and work. And then I thought about myself and how I lived in the city. And that work was work that some were lucky enough to do it from their heart. But many did it to earn money and to survive. And then I thought of how we do work that a lot of times harms the earth and harms us, all of us. And then I thought how we worked in harmony with nature before. And I thought of those times and I thought of how I was doing it. But what I saw is that nature was always calling me. In my work is, is always inspired by um, uh, the earth, the trees, the plants, the birds. Um, and these were things that were recurrent in all the work that I did. And somehow I have tattoos um, on my body of, of the earth in many ways, which I did because I loved them, but I never understood, but it was, it was a call. It was definitely a call. And uh, every time I made something, it, it manifested in my, in my work. So through the journey, which I will speak later in detail in the second part, uh, it was, this piece is about the disconnection that I felt and that the calling is there and that we don't listen to it at all. We don't see it. We don't, uh, connect we don't pay attention and um, this got me thinking and this called me back home and uh, I'd like to share that part of the journey through uh, some of the textile artwork that I did so I'm gonna share screen okay I'm a little bad with technology so I'm gonna <laughs> be a little slow on this but um, yeah and share screen. So I can't seem to do the full screen format. I'll try if it happens. Okay. Anyway. So I my think you have to do view, just view and then go to full screen. Oh, okay. okay. Yay. Yes. It'll take some time. Yeah, great. Okay. That's beautiful. Cool. So um there are the first elements and I'm going to read through this because it's just a few words and it explains um, the artwork and, and the expression. Mayaliang in Lepcha means the land of hidden paradise, which is the Lepcha land in our home is known as Mayaliang, which is the land of hidden paradise. And we as Lepchas are known as uh, Mutan Chirong, which means the children of creator. And uh, so this was the journey that I went through. And as you can see, uh, home, it just says home. And, and there is me thinking of home and crying because there's always been this um, craving of home. So just press the down button uh, on here. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, so I was in the city and I think of home. It seems like lifetimes away. I'm gonna keep scrolling on. I carry memories of it on my body, images of it projected onto my work, constantly reminding me of something I don't seem to remember anymore. I listen to its sound, I feel it in my soul. Somehow I've forgotten its sound and the songs that it sings. I traveled farther away, created images of it some more. In my quest to find meaning and purpose, I strayed from the way back home. I lost myself completely, broke everything I've known. I didn't remember what I was looking for, sunk deeper than ever before. Slowly, I picked up the pieces, tried connecting to the source searched for the wisdom of my ancestors, began looking with the eyes of a newborn. So I finally listened to the call of my Liang and my ancestors, to the voice inside my soul. Though things were not the same anymore, I still made my way back home. The journey has been unforgiving and long, but I am here now. I pray with faith to bloom, to finally sing my soul song and humbly stand in my truth. 
In my land, the land Ipumu, which is Mother Earth created for my ancestors, I found home and I realized I was carrying it within all along. So this is the journey that I took and I actually, it is amazing that, um, that this platform and the circles have been a place for me to stand in my truth, which I have done in very small ways before, but the calling is stronger now than ever and telling me that I have to stand in my truth and I have to share and I have to learn and I have to speak and say and accept that I am a shaman of my tribe. And it is difficult and it has been difficult and there is a lot of fear. There is a lot of fear. I, I think that summarizes it. But at the end of the day, if we don't listen and if we don't speak our truth, then our purpose here is lost. And at this moment, at this time, when this earth is in a state of, is in a state, it is time for us to accept and to be brave and to trust the universe and our ancestors and the earth to guide us and to show us the way and to speak through us and to do things that we're meant to do. And I feel with all the fear, with all that exists and all the confusion and all the patterns and all the ancestral trauma and that with everything that is going on, is, it is important to listen to one's heart, which is really soft sometimes or really loud sometimes. And uh, it is important for me to share that we really need to start listening to our hearts again and to be able to actually make time to meet our elders, to meet older people who have known a life that was so in tune with the earth and in giving and receiving and being humble. And I'm here today to be able to share my journey. And uh, this was the first part of me traveling from the city and questioning myself and really trying to understand what is it and why is it that I'm here. And uh, I'll move on to the next part. One second. So I will share with you the story of the moon. Moons are are female shamans of the Lepcha tribe. And uh, because I began this journey, I needed to do research to understand where I come from, because I didn't really know. I still don't fully know where I come from. But in that search and because of another project that kind of fell into my <laughs> lap, Zuban publishers again and somehow there is some amazing connection with them. They, they seem to be very connected and uh, they support this and I think the universe definitely supports this and uh, so this project came through and it was a, a research grant that was based on uh, women's histories and it was perfect for me because I really wanted to start looking and searching for the women, the shamans of the Lepcha tribe and, and, and uh, so I shared my journey and uh, the journey of a couple of uh, practicing moons and stories from Boontings, which are the male shamans and some of the elders of our uh, tribe. And through that, I was able to put together this installation. And uh, as this uh, installation, as this artwork, as this fabric, everything was being made. And I was helped by another shaman friend from the Tamang lineage. And uh, there were prayers and uh, we just prayed through the whole thing. And uh, here, I would like to share this with you. So madness, a doorway. In uh, many shamanisms, um, when a shaman awakes, he or she many times uh, has to go through madness to connect to other worlds, to connect to oneself. And uh, so this was my experience is I had moved 
far away from my home and the calling had come to come go back home but i i went to a place called goa in india uh to connect to nature actually because i was living in the city and this was by the sea and it was uh, a slower pace and it was uh not as harsh as the city and over there i managed to uh break my heart i managed to break my body i managed to break my mind and it was at this point of time that i had moved so far away from who i was in my heart that there was nothing of me left at that point of time which is what it felt like and at this point of time it is amazing how the universe arranges and plans things just a few days before i lost uh, my sanity uh, some friends told me that someone from kalimpong people from kalimpong had opened a restaurant a few blocks uh, a few uh, minutes away from my shop i i had a small shop that i used to make handmade uh, things and sell and uh, so i just went to visit looking for home and a connection from home and uh, i met my sister my teacher my guide my friend over there and uh, she checked on me every day and one day she comes up to me and she says you're not okay you got to come with me and uh, i just listened and she barely known me but i i something told me to go with her and uh, in a few days that i met her uh, i lost my sanity i had pushed addressing things for so long and i had abused my body i had broken my heart and uh, uh that's it that that led to a complete <coughs> destruction of everything that i knew and this madness was such that i was very afraid and my fear manifested and my visions my hallucinations they just manifested and i was very very afraid uh but it's funny i'd like to explain to this because i have not met many people who been mad and come back and in the, in the madness i could see feel everything and everything made sense but i couldn't speak and my mind was not connected and my body was not connected and and i couldn't do anything that i wanted to speak or, or share so at this point of time mimi she is uh, my sister my guide she told me that i was a shaman of my tribe and that i was having an awakening but since my mind my body my head everything was so disbalanced that it led me uh, into going mad many times before an awakening a lot of people or shamans who know of this time coming they usually prepare and they are prepared by meditating by by praying and doing many other things but since i was far away from that um, it uh, completely uh, changed everything within and broke everything i knew and uh, she told me i would take a week to get better and she cleansed my energy and took care of me and protected me at that time uh and that opened many doors for me as a child i did remember feeling things seeing things but it never made sense but somehow this opened something for me that helped me accept not completely at that point because there was it was very scary and that opened something for me and there is this uh being that you see in the in the artwork in the textile work who i saw and who opened the door for me and uh it came with great fear but he opened the door and i had shared before in one of the circles that i am now grateful for him to have opened the door for me and sometimes i question like is he a being of the sea or is he a part of me that opened up the door so i still don't know that yet 
but um, but here he is and this is who I saw and he opened the door for me and it took me a long time and Mimi taught me uh, many things that helped me on my journey and helped me stabilize because it takes a takes a while to stabilize and, and to um, understand what's happening and to be able to tune in to be able to um, connect in various ways and, and, and I think even now it began with connecting to myself and connecting to the earth and uh, just listening, learning to listen and to be in harmony with the elements, with our ancestors and uh, it's something that there are moments of clarity and there are moments of deep connection but sometimes it's not always, it's not always there all the time. So this was my entry into this world that I was so disconnected from. And uh, this got me closer to uh, searching for the knowledge and wisdom of my ancestors and more than anything to myself. Then, so one of the first things that I'd like, I started to search for was, okay, who am I? Where do I come from? Uh, what are the stories? And I've always been fascinated about um, uh, the supernatural and indigenous stories. So it was uh, amazing for me to go back and ask uh, people and elders and shamans about how we were created as uh, lecture people or as people, as human beings, as we say. So in the lecture creation story, um, the, the creator first created the moon and the skies and the sun and the stars and uh, then created he she slash she <laughs> created the earth and for the beings on the earth the beings on the earth the flesh was made out of dust the bones and ribs and spine were made of the trees and the rocks the breath was made of the wind and the blood was made out of the waters and the, hu the beings, living beings were created. And as we live this life and as we die, we go back again to being the dust of the earth. Our, our flesh becomes dust. Our bones, our ribs, our spine becomes the trees and the rocks again. Our blood returns to the rivers. Our breath goes back to the winds. And the energy and the life force returns to the sun and the moon. We are part of nature and we are one with them and we return to them when we leave this body. And that is the creation story of the lectures, which is so similar and which is the same as so many indigenous stories where we are of the earth and we are of the sky and we are of the stars and we are of the water, the rock, the dragonfly, the, the trees and, and, and so much more. And we forget that. And, and just a simple story like that helps us remember how we're connected to everything. So then the next part was, okay, where did the first shaman and the first, uh, where did the first shamans come from? And so there's a male shaman and a female shaman. But um, at, when the earth was created, there was peace and harmony. But at some point, some beings got powerful and they started to take advantage of their power and they started to eat human beings and eat the life force of beings and especially human beings. And at that point, the gods said that this is not in balance and that there is advantage that it is being taken. So the, the creator, along with the guardians of the four coordinates and many others, they created the first moon and the boom thing. Uh, Neolik Neosong moon is the first moon. And Zer Bongting is the first Bongting. And they were magical beings that were created to defeat this, uh, especially this one demon called Jumpu Pani, which is the, the one that caused major havoc on, on the earth. And as they were created, they pledged their life and their beings in service 
to the earth and in service to save uh, mankind from all kinds of calamities and imbalances. And um, what is beautiful about them is that they understand being human so well that they can maneuver through all the illusions, through all the um, imbalances, through all the problems, and they submerge their self into it, but it does not harm them because they know, and they know that they are part of that also. So they were created as magical beings and they managed to uh, defeat the demon. And after the demon was defeated, they still continued to stay on this earth and they made an oath to continue their life on earth in service to the earth and for the protection of the earth and to show people the way of love and of magic and of this connection to the, the earth. It, it's, it, this comes so often for me because uh, I feel very, very connected to the earth. And uh, I feel I am an earth energy born of the earth for many lifetimes. And, uh, and she encompasses everything. So when I say the earth, it means everything. And so they stayed back in service and uh, they've been around. They're still around. They're being born more and more every day. And that gives me joy and peace to know that they won't give up. They never will. So the moon has uh, many roles and there are many kinds of moons. They have various responsibilities and roles that they um, have. But I am drawn today to share with you the way of one particular kind of moon, which is known as the Pildon moon. This moon, other than doing other things like prophecies and healings and medicine and uh, exorcisms and healing the land and protecting the land and sending prayers, this moon is the only moon in the, in the various kinds of moons. And there are nine kinds of moons that I have found out right now. But the thing is that I have just begun my search into my roots and i'm very sure i will find out much more but um so far what i have learned and and i'd like to share that on trello on the boards i am sharing parts of the story there is the whole detailed written version with the images and uh, it's there for everyone to see and take their time to read because there's a lot more in there and i think there'll be a lot more later <laughs> but but I'd like to share about her and uh, you'll find the, the document uh, and the images on Trello for everyone to see. So the Pildon Moon is a specialization. Is, is, um, she is responsible for transporting the souls of the ones who have passed back to the Himalayas and back to our ancestors, our heaven is in the Himalayas with our ancestors, if you'd say so. We wouldn't call it heaven, but we rejoin our ancestors after our death. So um, this moon, as a person has passed, she meets the soul. And many times in one's life, one goes through traumas and one loses parts of their souls and they go into hiding because they've been afraid or they've been scarred or hurt. And one of the first things she does is the spirit that has, the person that has passed the spirit, she first collects all the scattered parts of the soul, wherever they may be hiding. And um, sometimes they're close by, sometimes they're really scared and they're hidden. Sometimes they're hiding in the place where the trauma had occurred. So it could be various things. It could be an accident. It could be a childhood trauma and abuse. It could be a various, very bad sickness that uh, would have happened. So it, one of the first things she does is she goes and she collects all these scattered parts of the soul that are hiding and brings them together. 
and she puts them into a rock face and keeps them there for a while till she does other uh, rituals and ceremonies. Um, and uh, I'd like to share, women are known to have nine souls and men eight. Uh, the man gave one of his, a part of his to make woman, uh, um, yeah, to make woman. And sometimes she doesn't find some souls because they're hiding very well. And uh, so she sends out her animal protectors and guides. And usually uh, what happens is that she finds she finds on her journey uh, animal bones, feathers, and other parts of the animal, which uh, are not killed, but have died a natural death. And usually she finds them, or mostly people give them to her. So they become her like support system. And so sometimes, depending on the kind of situation, say, for example, if, if, if someone had drowned and their soul is in the water, she might use, if she's connected to, say, the fish, then she would ask for the fish to help her to go retrieve that part of the soul. And sometimes, maybe because of the speed, you need to send something that's faster. So it depends on what really connects with her and what is needed for the situation. And then she'd ask them to help her find the parts of the soul and they retrieve this back and she brings them back. After all the scattered parts are collected, she takes them into her body and carries them into her body, some say. Some say she carries them on her back. Some say she ties them to her little finger and as she goes on this journey. And this journey, as you know, is not a physical journey. It's a spiritual journey. She makes a spiritual journey. And uh, she carries them, the person, the spirit with her, and takes him or her back to their home, their physical home, where in the spirit, she acts as a medium for this spirit to connect to their living ancestors and say what is unsaid. And she helps them connect, the living people connect to the departed soul and becomes a medium to share things like, um, I just remembered a story that I heard from my father. He said that he had visited one of these uh, funeral ceremonies. And uh, at, at a point, the, the moon began to go into a trance and then she spoke in a different voice, which was the voice of the person who had deceased. And she also started moving like the person in, in the person's body language. And then there was a part where the, the, where the soul uh, said to someone that I have, I have kept money for my nephew. He was a little child. So I think the soul wanted to give some money to the little child to buy candy or something to eat. He said, please give that money to that child. And then said, ah, you were looking for that thing that was lost. It's, it's fallen behind the box. You'll find it there. Uh, you can stop looking for it now. <laughs> so things like that and sometimes more intense and more deep and more emotional things that would maybe give peace to the family members for losing him or her and then after this ceremony is is this part of the ceremony is completed then she goes on and i have to remember this i i get confused sometimes um she takes them to panang river which which is a part of tista and uh, over there, actually, the soul does not realize that he or she has passed. And so the soul needs convincing and said that you have left and departed the world of the living. And for you to understand that, you come with me to Zonggu. You come with me to Panang River. And uh, let's walk on the, on the banks. And then as they walk on the banks, she, she shows the person who's passed see, you leave no footprints on the bank. You have left the world of the living. And sometimes uh, the soul is more accepting and the soul says, okay, I'm ready to move on now. But sometimes they're not. <laughs> so then after that, in case they do not um, realize it, then she takes them to Pas Pashintang, uh, where there is a forest. It is Pashintang is in Zonggu. And in the yeah, Pasingdang. Yeah. Oh, thank you. 
and to the forest and 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 then she says that okay now like you know just stand on this this bamboo and uh, see then the soul does and then the bamboo does not break or make a sound and she says that you have left the world of the living you have to come with me and then in case that does not happen then she's then the soul is taken to a river and said you do not have a reflection you have left the world of the living and there are many other steps and many degrees of convincing and not convincing the soul and i've never done this so i i, I don't know exactly <laughs> the, what it is but um and then finally when the soul realizes that he or she has departed then the soul, soul is taken to lingzhang where there is a sacred water body and the soul is cleansed of there and then usually when we each clan has their own sacred peak of the himalayas and their own sacred uh, lake and i heard from ninket that there is a secret cave also am i correct ninket yes yes but that part i didn't know of so i i just found out but then so the ma male energies are in the peaks and the female energies are in in the lake and usually what is said is that the male energies are returned to the masculine energies and the paternal side of the family ancestors and the female energy is returned to the masculine uh, feminine side of the of of their lineage and uh, so she takes the departed soul and then she returns them onto back on the lap of their ancestors that's what i was told on the lap of their ancestors and um what is interesting is it's not with this death ceremony but uh, what is interesting is that i thought that women will connect to the female energies and men will connect to the male energies but i was told that uh, there is no such thing if you have more masculine energy and you feel more drawn to the masculine like the peaks then you worship or you 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 pray to them and then if you're connected to the feminine so it it could be either way the the men could connect to the lakes as well and the women to the or both so that was quite interesting for me to um find out and uh, also during this ceremony she as she begins the journey she begins to um tie a cord of bamboo very thin strips of bamboo and by the end of the ceremony when she when she finishes it she would have tied seven knots and that would be the end of the ceremony and uh, what is interesting is i i always love this part that there's this story of um uh it could last from about half an hour to about um 12 hours sometimes the ceremony because sometimes there are how would you say disturbances so i i'd like to share a story where there was a moon who went for a funeral ceremony in a village and as she was about to perform it she started crying like profusely she was crying and crying and crying and uh, then the people then then the people the a senior shaman had to be called in because when the junior ones are there they need a senior one to guide sometimes and uh, it was that the, in that same village there was a small baby that had died at like around the same time and actually the spirit of the baby had entered the moon instead of the one whose ceremony she had gone for and the baby had died hungry so the baby was asking for milk so the moon became a medium and they found a woman who was uh, who had breast milk and the moon was fed the milk and the child stopped crying and the child left her body and then as she was going on to perform this funeral ceremony again another person entered her body and it was someone who was a driver from that area and uh, he wanted to give his uh, widow money which he had kept for her which he told the moon through her and the people of the village went found the money gave it to the widow and then this spirit also left and then finally she could do the ceremony that she was there for so um it is really interesting to hear these stories and uh, there is um also a uh, interesting thing uh, give me a second i'll just collect myself <laughs> um hmm so sometimes when the body when when it is a junior shaman 
and uh, she is just learning. Sometimes some souls are very stubborn and they refuse to leave the body. At these moments, if she's strong enough, she can um, ask them to leave or remove them from her body. But in case sometimes she is not, then a senior moon has to be called in to, um, to help her remove the stubborn soul from the body. And this process is uh, very exhausting for the, for the moon. And uh, that's something I'd like to like, also share here, that uh, it is difficult sometimes. And this responsibility of safely reaching the soul to our ancestors is something very important and very dangerous sometimes. And uh, coming to dangerous, so I'd like to just like put this in, in, in the flow. What has happened over the period of time is that lepchas have um, mixed other spiritualities, religions, and have mixed with other um, practices of other tribes also. So I'm talking about like the current state, and this is not to um, judge any religion. Um, so I come from a Christian background, and uh, this is something that makes my mother very afraid. Because, um, because. <laughs> just because and um, many times um, you are asked it is rejected and denied completely and you're considered mad and you're considered to be yeah mad that is the right word <laughs> you're considered to be mad and it's difficult for people to come out even it's really funny that I use that word, but yes, it's difficult for people to come out and say that, oh, by the way, I'm a shaman. <laughs> and uh, so that is, I think, a very big challenge here right now because one, because of the disconnection that we've had and we have, and because of fears, they know it's good, but they do not want to see it. And they do not want to allow anyone else to do it. So for me to be standing here or sitting here actually and to be sharing this, I hope and I pray to be able and people who need to see this, see this, that it is possible to accept and it is not easy. And uh, I have been told by um, my, my teacher, my guide, my sister Mimi, I have told, I've been told by her at the very beginning, she's like, you will find people, you will find help, they will come, they'll stay, some of them, but it's your path, it's a lonely one. And in today's world, you will have to be ready to stand up and to really be there in your truth and to not be afraid and to do it with love. And uh, I feel today it is important for me to say this more than one of the things that is very important is that whoever has the gift, whoever feels connected, it is scary. There are elders here. There are many forces. There are many th people, energies that are helping us on our journey and that it is possible to accept. It is possible to live. It is possible to balance our lives and it is possible because... Um, this is our contract. This is our service. And this is something that we are here to do. So even though there is fear, you're not alone. And uh, I'm here. And everyone here is a witness that it is possible to do. I'd like to share that because back home, what I had said uh, to, in the mail to Jim and Maya, uh, I heard from Minket, there are many with the gift who one, do not know what to do with it because they think that they're crazy because everyone's telling them that they're crazy. And uh, in any case, because you are different, society, people also kind of shun you and keep you away from, you have to be really committed or thick-skinned <laughs> to, to be on this, this kind of a path and to be able to withstand all of that or be 
yeah, saying that this is it, this is what I want to do. And uh, unfortunately, what I heard from Linket, and then I feel it in my heart, is that so many young ones with the gift are getting lost or committing suicide, which is, uh, it's a very intense thing for me to share. And uh, we don't want that. And we want to reach out to them. And we want to be able to figure out ways to tell them that, there are people to help, there is guidance, and to tell them that, okay, you know, you see things, you feel things, and how to kind of be balanced with them, and how to question, and how to listen, and how to search, and I, I, I really pray, I really pray that all, that all the souls that are struggling to connect and show themselves May the universe, may our ancestors, may Mother Earth, in all of love and light, show them the way and help them. For we need you. For we need you. The Earth needs you. And I pray that we will be able to be there for you. Please bless us and please bless them in their journeys and give them the strength and the wisdom and the support that they need. Please show them the way, please show us the way, and may this be done with love and gentleness. We thank you and we pray for help so that we may help and we may serve with all that we are, as we are. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Also, another thing that I'd like to share is that this, I think the reason that I was called to speak about the Pildan Moon is because when our souls depart, we have to go through the river to meet our ancestors. And the river is being dammed and the river is being destroyed. And it's, it will stop flowing in, and that, that will, kill the river where do the souls go where do they go when you harm the river i would like to really take this opportunity to be able to share with people that tista the our sacred river and the river of life in so many ways and of death is being hurt and we have to do something about it so i i, I put out my request, my humble request to please um, what we can do, the, the Minkit and all have been um, sharing stories about the river, have been sharing the situation about the river and um, River Tista. And uh, please um, support this and please voice this and share this with your friends, family, and please share this because um, we need to be the voice. We need to be the voice. It is time to be the voice. I pray all of us connect and understand the pain that we cause and understand the devastation that we cause. I pray we remember. I pray we remember. I pray. Please help us remember love. Please help us remember connection. Please help us remember oneness. Please help us remember. Please help us. So it is. So it is. So it is. Uh, so, collecting myself back. <laughs> Mom, hug. Alien, we are there with you. I'm I'm known to cry a lot, by the way. <laughs> we are there with you. But I, I I cry with love most of the time. Sometimes with anger and sadness, but it's love most of the times. And that's the other thing I before I get to that. Um hashtag save T star, hashtag stop stage four. And uh Minket will post in the chat the link 
please help us share this. We need to spread this because it's, there are, it is happening all over the world. And, and, and I, I'm here today to share about the River Tista and, and, and this beautiful opportunity to be able to do that. And, 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 and I know that people watching this are already connected. So please help us. Help us save Tista, please. Oh, oh okay. Moving on to the next one. Warm hug. <laughs> Thank you. So um, this is this is the moon away from home, which is about Mimi, the person who helped me and kind of uh, plant helped me plant my seed and put some mud on top of it and you know watered it from time to time. And so she is of a lineage called the Sitling lineage, which is a common lineage that I have with her, which I didn't know which I found out later. It was actually one of those stories we were sharing after I'd met her. And she, she was like, you know, I had a great grandmother who was so powerful a moon that she, with the power of her mind, just like managed to like really explode a huge rock. So I said, I have a grandmother, that did, great grandmother that did the same. And it turns out that we have the same grandmother, great grandmother at some point of time. So um, Mimi, Mimi, I've written this because I, I thought I'd forget it, but um, Mimi is, um, she's half Lepcha and half Tamang, but the Lepcha um, lineage calls her very strongly. And um, she, she remembers of many lives and she has Korean, Chinese, English, Irish, and Mayan origins too. And uh, she has, uh, her protectors are like a dragon, a lone wolf, a phoenix, a grizzly bear. And uh, what she said is, at that point of time, her role is to help lost souls who are on the path. And she happened to find me. She happened to find me. And um, she is not a traditional lepcha shaman, but she gets her messages and her instructions directly as i would say and uh, she follows her heart and she 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 goes on but her what what her thing is that she's been in the city away from home but mother earth the universe is so big inside her that she manages to hold all of that even in the concrete jungle and to be able to guide and love and be also sometimes a little firm because I'm a little stubborn sometimes. So she's a little firm with me, which I need sometimes. But, but it's beautiful to have met her. And she taught me so much because after the madness, um, she taught me simple basic things like grounding and meditation and channeling and, and uh, healing or reading. And she taught me many things like that. And I was kind of like a it's funny, like an apprentice. So it's funny that I say that. So I knew that when she was, she was teaching me when she was meeting people and healing them. And I knew I had to like run with the water and, you know, like the incense and, and, and do things like that. But um, what I would like to share, and in, you'll, I'll talk about more moons after this, but um, she is someone who is also a moon, but she's not your, con not our con uh, conventional moon. So there are moons that are, being born away from home and still are connected and are practicing in their own ways. And I, I recently also spoke to another Bung Thing, which is a male shaman. And he said that, ah, nowadays uh, the young ones are being born in different places. So th there seem to be many people from the city who come to them and say that, oh, but I can see this and feel this. And, and then what is amazing is that uh, him, especially him, he was very open. And he was like, yes, you will receive your instructions. It's no problem if you can't speak the language. You know, it'll come to you. You'll start blabbering it. So it's amazing to see that there is this side where we all adapt. And we all, I don't know the right word for it, but we all adapt to the situation. And what is needed is created. And you are put in those situations for specific reasons. And uh, so this is a moon who is away from home, but
but is still practicing. And, and that's something I'd like to like share uh, through this artwork. So this is uh, the moon that I met. She is from, uh, her name is Bebina Tamsang Mu from the Tamsang Mu lineage and clan. And um, she's a Pildon moon. She's one of the moons that transport souls um, back to our ancestors. And um, it was beautiful meeting her. Um, there, there is us from the city. <laughs> And there was her, who was the first one I've met, who was a traditional moon. And there is such humbleness and simplicity. And it's just so, you don't even need to state that we are connected to the earth. It's just there. She didn't need to say a word. It's just there. And that was amazing. And, and, and I'd like to share a bit of her story. So she is from a lineage of shamans. She is the third generation of shaman. Her grandfather was, her father was, she is, and now her fourth generation, her nephew is also. So it's in the genes. And um, so just getting to that, before that, I'd like to share that a lot of times, uh, the moons are born in the same, moons and bunkings are born in the same lineage, but it is not true always. It could skip generations or it could be completely a new uh, line or a new uh, clan that they would be born in. And uh, the thing is that what they say about moons and bunkings is that the seed is planted in many and it's the purest of heart in the ones who have the most fertile soil where the plant thrives. So that's something that I've been um, told by uh, some of the moons. Coming back to this uh, moon, Bibina, she knew as a child that she had the gift and uh, because she was from the lineage, she knew, she knew it. But what had happened is that she got married early. She had a child and uh, it was her time to accept her gift and really use it and, and be part of everything. But since she had a family already and she had a responsibility, she refrained and she was like, I don't think I can do this. And she, she pushed away her gift. And, uh, but what happened is that in, in that, it just came stronger and stronger every time. There were times where she would fall really ill and then she went to a shaman and the shaman said that you will have to accept your gift because it, it, it will come and it will come hard. So you might as well um, accept with least resistance and things will flow. But she still refused the gift. And then her brother, who was also a shaman, he told her that I will help because he saw his sister in pain and in, in, in fear and discomfort. And he said to her, what I will do is I will have a ceremony to block your gifts. And uh, he went to the confluence of the river Tista and Rangit and offer, made offerings and prayers. And, and he, he what, what it's called kind of like cutting the path. He tried to do that. But he told her that in this case, because I'm going against nature, um, it will, one of us will survive. He's like, I'm going to do this for you, but it's, I'm doing something wrong. But for, you, for my love for you, I will do this. And surely within a month, he, uh, her, the brother passed away. And then she realized that I cannot push this away. And by that time she had her second child and she surrendered completely. And uh, after that, now she was smiling and saying, she's like, ah, now I don't worry. Itpu Mu, Mother Creator, she takes care of everything. When I need to go, the car comes. When I need money, money comes. And when I need help, somebody comes to help. So she's like, now I just surrender and I just go with the flow. So it was very beautiful that she said, Itpu Mu takes care of me and everything is like organized and I don't need to do anything. So it's like amazing what she said. And uh, what is amazing about her is, is usually originally there used to be, hum uh, sorry, uh, animal offerings and sacrifices as part of the rituals. But uh, this moon, she does not sacrifice, uh, she refuses to sacrifice animals. And she says that for our own selfish purposes, we have uh, killed innocent living beings 
and we have caused pain and almost like a curse on ourselves so she she is a vegetarian and she refuses to um offer any um live uh, sacrifices and she said if she really needs to sometimes then she offers an egg or the amazing thing for me being so new at this she's like or i find something and i put it back to life and then and then i sacrifice it and that just scared me a little bit <laughs> but uh so that is bevina tamsang mo and uh, that is the story of the traditional moon and in this artwork as you see she's a mother she's a mother and that's all i felt when i felt her energy and when i was with her and uh, it was beautiful to have met her and then we come to like one of the last ones last frames so when an old moon dies then a new mo moon is born and a moon is buried and never burnt because in the lecture um, ways because when the moon is buried then only can a new moon be born um i don't know the significance of this but that's how um um it is and uh when a moon is awakened there are many ways in which they can awaken madness being one there is near death sickness which is like recorded so these are the stories i've asked and 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 i found out and another one is near death sickness for a lot of the shamans and uh, sometimes there just signs like someone's tongue sticking out and doesn't go back in or someone running around like a crazy person and then they're taken to a senior uh, moon and uh, the senior moon guides and helps the the junior moon uh, through and um, there there is um there are moons that are born with the gift but are taught a lot of the uh ceremonies and rituals and things like that and that is a different kind of moon and the one that is directly linked or connected is known as like a it moon so th that's a different kind of moon they directly they do as they feel and as they're instructed and so there are those kind of moons also so getting to this part um it's amazing that there are more and more moons and shamans being discovered and i was very happy to hear that and uh, young ones and there are many training with the many many shamans also so there are a huge portion of of the community that still send their children um to shamans and say ah this one's got the gift we got to send her or him for training or things like that so that was really amazing um to see and um i'll get on to the next part okay so we missing an old new world yeah what i would like to say about this is for me i actually stand in the middle there is the connection to the old in i am born of the new right now in how does one use this understand this and uh, how does how does one make that bridge between the old and the new is something that i'm trying to understand and uh because like i shared like we shared before in the circles it is this connection that i pray we can make again between the old and the new and we are bridges and we have our mediums and we have our gifts and they will instruct us what to do but um how do we do that is a question i've been asking myself and they will instruct but i'd also some point be it would be amazing i would like to ask even the elders of our our tribe and also the elders this is something i'd like to understand and i'd like to think about and i'd like to work on which it will happen in its own way also but there have been things that elders have tried and elders have been seeing and doing and you know i i think it it is time for all of us to reconnect to also the elderly in our communities and the ones that are leaving us very rapidly and that is something um i had written and i feel that i worry about sometimes because the wisdom will be lost 
And um, we need to have wisdom carriers. We need to be able to make time to go visit them, the elders, to understand, to collect these stories, to understand how they lived and uh, how do we uh, respect or honor something? How do we maneuver through things? And how did you maneuver? How did they maneuver through things? So I think it's important for us to make that time to actually visit and spend time and understand even our grandmothers, our grandfathers, our uncles and aunties and all, all the people that are here who will be leaving us. So I feel it is crucial for us to do that at this point of time and to be able to reconnect with them also because at this point people are living in the cities for work and survival and and nobody really returns back home is very rare few people who actually come back home and uh, they're considered mad mostly <laughs> but but that is the reality and that is something i'd like to understand and really really uh, search for so getting to this part so this is the insides of the the illustration somehow i was instructed to have seven panels and when you go mad and when you all the lines are blurred there's no real there's no dream there's all everything the inside the outside is all mixed up and uh, everything blurs so while that was happening on the outside there is a lot happening in the inside or even in the magic world or realms that you don't see so that that installation basically uh, has this as the inner panels uh, again. So, yes, we've uh, come here. I'd like to read a few things just before I go and I end this part. It was supposed to be in the beginning, but I'll read this. I have found a gentle whisper a whisper that drowns in all the noise sometimes. When I stay quiet and listen carefully, I hear the remnants of a song. I don't know the song, though I vaguely remember hearing it before. It beats in my heart very loud sometimes. What is it trying to tell me? I don't fully know yet. It is telling me to follow, connect to the source of all its sounds. There is a deep need within, a calling. It tells me to dig deeper. It tells me to share my story, the story of my people. I know deep within it is connected to Mother Earth, to her kingdom, my ancestors and the lives they have lived, to us who have lost our connection to something much larger than we can ever imagine. The beckoning asks me to stop and look at the signs, at the little dots and the connectors that has been and is part of one story. To remember all that is forgotten and almost lost so that I may truly see, feel and speak all that is needed to find the courage and humbly stand in my truth. May Mother Earth, our ancestors, Kanchenjunga, Chupandim, Dalingmo, Tista and the Divine guide us and show us the way. So it is. And there's one more, which was like the ending one. May it be room bless you, Alien. Thank you. This is an opening, an opening of our hearts. It is a glimpse of a world lost and forgotten in the seasons of time. What does it mean to stand here? trying to justify each action, each word, and each expression of our broken souls. The cloth that covered us veils us no more. We stand bare naked with all our wounds. They match the scars of Mother Moon. For eons we have died, so many rivers we have cried, all the suffering and disconnection we have endured. Hear our voices, take a look at our souls, we bleed like our mother, the one who nourishes us all. Why is it we need to prove our worth? Why is it we need to bear our world? Why is it we need to hold our ground? This ground is sacred, 
as sacred as all living beings, as sacred as the wind blowing in the trees. Will you hold our hands? Will you support us in your embrace? Will you love us tenderly and with grace? We are weary, but we have not given up yet. We never will. This body will die. The new age will come. Voices will begin to fade. In every new age, many voices will rise and sing long forgotten tunes. We are here to remember the sounds, to recall each tale, to remind us of how far we have come. The voices continue in every birth, not breaking the cycle of the song. So hear our song, the song of life, a song passed on from mother to her child. We are here to remind you, and we hope the tune ignites you to find the song that hums inside you. We pray that the songs find a place in your heart. May you find the courage to sing your own song, a song that sinks to the beat of Mother Earth's heart. May we remember, so it is, so it is, so it is. Thank you, Maya, Jim, and Minkit for being with me through this. It has been difficult to accept who I am. And you're here with love, holding space for me to be able to share my truth. This is who I am. And I'm of this earth, and we are of this earth. And I'm grateful. I am very, very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Alain, this, Alain, this was so beautiful. I feel that I was sitting, I was present at a birth. I have been a doula and a midwife's assistant, and I feel tonight I was sitting with a birth. I was witnessing the birth, and you're, you're coming out in a new way. And I honor you and your courage and your questing and, and following your heart. And you gave me courage. I'm working on a memoir and I've been afraid of some parts of it revealing and you gave me some courage today mm -hmm. to stand in the truth of who I am even more. Thank you so much. And your, your art, your fiber art is just exquisite. Mm -hmm. It is so beautiful to have the storytelling with this art together. I, I feel so deeply enriched. It's uh, amazing. If you notice on the screen, and I just noticed it, there is birth on the right in the big picture. And that's the oh, only yes. one that is that yeah. big space one. Oh, it's amazing. The universe just astonishes me like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely to highlight. Uh, and all the other images are smaller if you if you uh if you notice. Yeah. yeah. See? They're all uh -huh. smaller and that one's just like <laughs> Yes. Oh. Wow. An honor to be here for this. It really is. It's just yeah, I feel like I just was able to be in a very intense ceremony. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, still, it's just moving all through me. It's gonna move all through me for a while. I, uh, I really, I nod to your courage, because you know this will go online now. A lot of people are gonna see this. And that takes courage to do that. So, yeah. And I've never seen anyone present something that way with that sort of artwork is just, yeah, amazing. Thank you. 